Today was a big day for Mortal Kombat fans. We got a reveal of what's going to be coming for year two of Mortal Kombat 1 with Chaos Reigns or the Combat Pack 2. And there's been a lot of emotional reactions to it. A lot of people don't like what they saw. A lot of people did like what they saw. Me personally, I'm a little bit in the middle. And I was at work when this reveal happened, so I wasn't able to do the typical watch party live streams that I do. Uh, but I decided, you know, after work, I'm gonna relax. I am tired, I'm gonna get my cigar. And while I was out here in my backyard, I was like, let me make a video. Let me actually sit down and relax and let's talk about my thoughts on Chaos Reigns. So let's talk about some of the things that I like first. The first thing that I for sure 100% like is the inclusion of Ghostface. Ghostface is one of my favorite horror slasher icons and one of the few guest characters that I legitimately did want to see in Mortal Kombat. I am a big fan of the Scream movies. And if you guys don't follow me on Instagram, by the way, go ahead and do that, at Poet. You guys would know, or if you do, you guys would know that I dress up as Ghostface every single time I go to Raider games. So I'm not gonna say that I am literally Ghostface, but it feels like a gift for me personally. And so I'm really excited to see what Ghostface gameplay is going to be like. I am 100% going to main the character. And yeah, we'll see if he or she, we don't know, um, is going to play well. I assume they probably will. The guest characters have been pretty good so far in terms of gameplay, except for Homelander. It didn't really land for me personally. But uh, yeah, I'm really excited, and I am also glad that Roger L. Jackson is going to be the voice of Ghostface, as he was in the Scream movies. All, every single Scream movie, he has been the voice of Ghostface. So it's good to have that consistency, because it's going to make the character feel a little bit more authentic in the game. Another thing that I really do like is animalities. A lot of people have been talking about animalities, and a lot of people have been praising animalities, as they should, because animalities are freaking cool. They tap into that ridiculous side of Mortal Kombat, that, that fun side, that cute side. And it's been a long time since we've seen animal since the arcade era. We haven't seen animalities back in modern form, and I'm happy that they're back. They all look fantastic. I cannot wait to see what every single animality is like. I'm definitely going to be going in to log in, logging into the game and just going into the uh, fatality tutorial and just checking every single one of them. It's going to be free for all users. It's going to be a free update. You don't have to buy it. So that's really good. Noob Saibot is also a highlight for me. Not a really big fan of the design. I'm not sure what that Mountain Dew looking kind of design looks like. I wouldn't say Mountain Dew, actually Monster Drink. That's what I meant to say. The Monster Drink looking design. I'm not really a big fan of the random ass pirate hat. Um, I know why the green accent color is there because he's going to be created. He, Noob Saibot is going to be created by Havoc instead of Quan Chi in this timeline, which we'll get into later. And uh, I can get over that because I feel like there's going to be a shader or a skin where the accent color is going to be purple because that is his accent color. It's black and purple. Uh, but Noob Saiba is one of my favorite characters of all time. It's like He's like top three for me. So I'm glad to see that Noob Saiba is back in a Mortal Kombat game. And his gameplay from the little snippets that we saw, everything seems very MK9 to me. And I like the way he played in MK9 because that's when I became, that's when I first became a really big fan of Noob Saibot. And yeah, I just cannot wait to see what more he's going to have in terms of gameplay. And yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be main, maining him because he's one of my favorite characters of all time. Again, like top three. The skin pack also looks really good. You get it free if you pre-order this Chaos Reigns bundle or this Chaos Reigns expansion pack. Uh, the wedding uh, scorpion looks neat. UMK3 Sub-Zero, always great to have the classics. UMK3 Noob Saiba, always great to have the classics. Uh, and then Empress Melina, it's great to see any skin that she has with the veil is great to see. I just wish that there was a Mortal Kombat Deception skin for Melina, but whatever, man. I mean, we have the PC mods for that, and there's a PC mod for Deception Melina, and it looks fantastic. So if I want to play Deception Melina, I guess I'll just download the mod. Now let's get into, like, the meh section. There isn't anything that I think is egregiously bad it could be there's potential that it could be but for me right now my initial reaction 
me sitting down here and just having my thoughts flow around my head, it's just a meh reaction to me. And the first thing that I want to talk about in the meh reaction category is the story mode. All the story mode clips of the DLC story mode expansion that we saw, none of, it just, I just felt nothing when I saw all of those scenes. I, I don't really know what it was about. Um, I don't know what it was supposed to be, what the entire point was. Maybe there's going to be a story DLC or a story trailer specifically to expand on what the story is going to be about for the story DLC. But so far, it just looks like multiverse stuff. And as you guys know, I'm not a big fan of the multiverse in Mortal Kombat. It's just, it, it doesn't belong there. It, it, it never really did. And it just doesn't land for me, especially the way it was done in Mortal Kombat 1. So the fact that they're doing more of that stuff, it's just, I, I'm, it's not for me. I'm turned off by it. Uh, I, of course, am still going to play it. I'm still going to watch the scenes. I'm probably going to do a live stream where I get to sit down with you guys and we just watch what we see and what we get. So I'll make a full judgment on it when we see that. But yeah, I mean, with the Havoc design, I can totally tell that they're trying to do the Ultron, uh, the, uh, the version of Ultron from the Marvel What If series where he had all the Infinity Stones on his chest. Havoc has things that look very much like infinity stones on his chest and he's trying to be the ruler of the multiverse and Ultron in that episode of what if was trying to be the ruler of the multiverse. We know what you're doing again, just not for me. Another aspect of the combat pack too, that I just don't have that many thoughts on that. I just don't really care about or have like a meh reaction to is Conan and the T-1000. Now look, there's a lot of people on Twitter saying, who are these characters? NRS is so out of touch. Nobody asked for them. Only white people like to have these characters in the game. And I'm just like, you guys know that you guys are snitching on yourselves on how very young and naive you guys are because Conan the Barbarian is one of the most iconic film uh, icons in all of film history, especially when it comes to Arnold Schwarzenegger, Arnold, the Arnold Schwarzenegger's filmography, and the T-1000 is one of the most popular villains in one of the most iconic films of all time, the Termin Terminator 2. So when you have two very iconic, uh, you know, movie icons that have influenced pop culture and film to this day, and you're responding with, I don't know who these characters are or these characters are irrelevant. You really are showing your age. Now, look, I, this is coming from somebody who's 24 years old. So I understand that people in our generation don't have the same connection to that generation of movies, but you also don't have to be very, you, you don't have to be naive to that fact. You can at least do a little bit of research here. People who are fans of those movies come from a generation that played the very first Mortal Kombat games. So the OG fans, this is for you. It appeals to them. Are they not allowed to have things appeal to them? I don't know. I, I, I feel like it's kind of ridiculous to try to label those two characters as not relevant at all. I mean, come on, guys, really? Like, like from Gen Z to Gen Z, come on, really? Me personally, the reason why I don't care, the reason why I'm not like the biggest fan or anything is not because I think the characters are irrelevant or anything like that. It's mainly just because I just don't care for guest characters, no matter who they are in general, with notable exceptions, of course, Ghostface. I would like to see Michael Myers. I would like to see Chucky. But yeah, like for me personally, I just don't care about guest characters. I would rather see Mortal Kombat characters, Mortal Kombat characters, get me excited the most. Now to the big thing that a lot of people are talking about, Cyrax and Sector. Cyrax and Sector are finally in a Mortal Kombat game and for in a main character slot. They're not, you know, variation slots. They're not story mode only cameos. They're not cameo fighters. They're their own main fighters. After what, 13 years, they're finally back, except they're not. They're gender swap versions of the characters and they look very different from how we traditionally know them. And it doesn't work for a lot of people. And it kind of works for some people. 
let's discuss. I'm not one of those guys who gets incredibly weird about characters who are gender swapped or characters who are race swapped from well-established characters. I know in certain cases, I think it's okay to have a kind of negative reaction to it. I, I think there there are justifications in some cases, but in most cases, I'm, I'm like, okay with it. As long as you do something well, and you do something great to justify that change, then then go ahead, you know, knock yourselves out. But you have to understand the context of where these gender swap versions of Sector and Cyrax are in. They're in a game with a lot of other Mortal Kombat characters that have gone through significant changes, like Kui Liang as Scorpion. Kui Liang is known to be the definitive Sub-Zero. You have General Shao instead of Shao Kahn. You have Baraka, who's not a Tarkatan, or in the traditional sense, he is a disease, you know, infected character who becomes a Tarkatan. Rain is not the son of Argus anymore, and there are way more changes than I just named right there. And a lot of them are not that great changes. Some of them are pretty okay, pretty fine, but now that we have another character or another set of characters coming in with big changes like Sector and Cyrex being gender swapped, the reaction that I'm getting now, given the context is, oh boy, we're doing this again. We're doing a, a, a ro roll of a dice. Let's, well, is it going to be good? Is it going to be not good? I don't know. Well, I, we just don't know. And I, I don't want to have to roll that dice again. I kind of want to have that comfort of like, Oh yeah, the characters that I know and love, the way they have always been, they're back. And now I don't have that feeling. Especially when I know that there have been a lot of Mortal Kombat fans who have been asking for more female characters to be added in DLC packs. Like, there have been a lot of people asking for Jade, there's been a lot of people asking for Cassie, there have been a lot of people asking for uh, Scarlet. You know, those would have been cool characters to add. Uh, they still could be coming, we don't know, there could be more DLC after this. But still, like, when you add in traditionally known male characters and then gender swap them and say, hey guys, we got your female characters, kind of feels a little bit cheap to me, I guess. Next questions I gotta ask is, okay, how is their story? How is their gameplay? How is their character designs? And so far from what I've seen, nothing really wows me. Nothing really sticks with me. I'm not saying anything is bad in terms of their character personality not in terms of their gameplay, design, eh, I mean, I'll get that in a little bit, but we'll wait. I'll wait and see. I'll wait and see what their story has to offer. I'll wait and see what their gameplay has to offer because, hey, they may be very fun to play. When there's a combat cast for both Sector and Cyrax, what if they blow my mind? It makes me really excited to play those characters because the way I, you know, my preference in terms of gameplay style, maybe that's exactly what I'm looking for. I have no idea yet. I really don't know, so I'm waiting my full judgment until they're like fully out or we see a lot more from them and things like that. Um, when it comes to design, I don't know. It it, it kind of seems like AI art that you would have seen from a true underdog th YouTube video thumbnail. Uh, I'm not saying, you know, I'm not talking shit on true underdog or anything, but it, it just seems like I would see that from AI art and things like that. And that feels kind of mean because I know that the artists worked very hard. I'm sure they put in a lot of passion into their work. And so for me to say, LOL, AI, AI art to somebody's actual art, I, I can understand that's a little mean, but I don't know. Maybe that's like a commentary on how advanced AI has been. I don't mean that in a very demeaning way. I'm sure that whoever designed these characters have done uh, worked very hard and things. But for me personally, it's just... It's just not sticking with me. It, it just, nothing really wows me. But again, I just don't have that much thoughts on it because I need to learn more. But in, given the context of how many changes have happened with Mortal Kombat characters in this specific Mortal Kombat game, and not all of them being that great, we're just rolling that dice again. And I really don't like having to roll that dice every single time a Mortal Kombat character gets added into the game. But hey, if this works for you, if this is something right up your alley and you're a Sector and Cyrex fan and you think this is just fine, knock yourself out, man. I'm glad that you're happy and I'm glad that you're going to have fun with it and you're looking forward to it and are excited about it. Just for me, I don't know, not that really excited for it. So here are my closing thoughts and my cigar is pretty much out at this point. 
My closing thoughts are there are some good things in here and there are some things that I'm just not a really big fan of or things that I'm just kind of meh about. And that includes Ghostface. I'm really excited for Ghostface. Really excited for the animalities. I really like what I'm seeing from Nuke Cybot. I like the skins. And the things that I'm just meh about are the story mode clips, Sector and Cyrax, uh, not really, you know, the biggest fan of guest characters in general, Conan the Barbarian and the T-1000. So, yeah, those are the things I'm mad about. Kind of a mixed bag. There are some people who are saying that this is complete and total dog shit. There are some people who are saying that this is all perfect and they like everything. And if that's truly how you believe, more power to you, man. You know, you're entitled to your own opinion, but I've never been that way. I've always been here to sit down and tell you guys, this is what I like, this is what I don't like. At the end of the day, this is all art and art is subjective. Um, and I do believe that there is an actual real discussion to be had about what is objectively good for Mortal Kombat and what's bad for Mortal Kombat, but I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here, once again, to sit here and talk to you guys about what I like and what I don't like. I've always been honest with you guys, despite some people, stupid people, you know who they are, telling you otherwise. But yeah, let me know in the comments below what you guys think about all this. I'm going to be making a separate video talking and responding to what the community is saying. If you guys don't follow me on Twitter, make sure you guys go and follow me on Twitter. I tweeted out, hey, let me know what you guys think under this tweet about what you're feeling, because I'm going to respond to it and use it in a YouTube video. So. Make sure you follow me on Twitter again and then go under that tweet and let me know what you guys think because, hey, that may be featured in a YouTube video, but also the comment section is right there for you too. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a big thumbs up. It really does help out my channel as well as subscribing. It also helps out my channel as well and it will make sure that you don't miss content from me. I'll see you guys in the next video.